On the road from Sagata to Kalinga, Jenna found herself with a flat tire. All right, Jenna, get a flat, get a flat. And there it is, big old chunk. With no suitable replacements nearby and already a day behind schedule, we were forced to wait out the storm, leave our support vehicle behind, and push on for what should have been a four and a half hour night ride to Abra. Little did we know what we were in for. We are on low fuel. We still have two hours and 15 minutes to go. We're not gonna make it. We're at Malibcom. If you said that you can send help, it would help if you could tell them to meet us on the route as an intercept, as in they start the route and, and we meet each other. Riding to up for four and a half hours in the Philippines at night after a rainstorm. How much more adventure can you get? <laughs> What's the time? What time is it? It's like 7.30? We'll get there at midnight, yeah. yeah well. Feeling pretty optimistic and without knowing what we're about to enjoy, we pressed on through the misty mountains with our destination being the Cobra Farm in Bonguet Abra, where we'll be meeting with the boys. And by the boys, I mean other riders who I've never met before. <laughs> well, I'm glad you're laughing. <laughs> you're like, notice how no one's on the road? <laughs> Look at guys. Look at guys. Crap. <laughs> oh gosh. That's just a bit Ooh. Dodged some big ass rocks there. Oh boy. Oh, oh god. Ah, I'm stopping here. <laughs> Alright, I'm getting off. Ready? Yep. Crap. Adventure. <laughs> Man, it's pouring, eh? It's getting heavier. I had to just start bloody pouring, eh? <laughs> Look at us go, Janet. <laughs> <laughs> the downpour continued for some time, but it wasn't our main concern, not after what I just witnessed. One hour in. Uh, the roads have gotten better, which is nice. There's less cows, which is also nice. Uh, and the rain has sort of stopped. There's no downpour, which is fantastic. Three and a half hours to go. It's uh, currently... 9.37. Doing okay there. Bike's holding up nicely. Jenna's nice and snug behind me, leaning with the corners. It's a slow ride. Probably 30 to 40 k's an hour on average. Did see a car though. That's actually, that had me thinking. It was just like a trooper van with about 15 dudes with just guns. I was like, ah crap, let's get the hell out of here. And then I'm um, I just started playing scenarios in my head. Uh, it didn't make me ride any faster. But we're doing okay. We just had a little snack. How are you feeling, Jenna? Good. Feeling good? Nocturnally awake. Nocturnally awake. She's my energy right now. Cause I could fall asleep. Uh, we're due to get there at around 1 a.m. So yeah, we still got a fair ways to go. Still feeling optimistic, we pushed on. But this time, the rates were getting worse. <laughs> No, I'm not scared. I'm, I'm, I'm concentrating here. It's just like road conditions just change so quickly and it's so hard to see. And I'm just constantly making adjustments and full on. I just wish they went a bit wider. I can see around the corner a bit, like that. I can't, I just can't see. And that, basically every time I turn, I can't see. God. With my vision restricted by the lack of light, I was relying heavily on my GPS to see what corners were coming up and what we were in for. At this point, I knew I could trust my phone wouldn't go flat due to Quadlock's wireless charging head that was keeping my phone constantly topped up. Can you imagine if my phone ran out of battery right now? If you need a trusty phone mount, check Quadlock out and use my code in the description below for 10% off everything store-wide. Thank you Quadlock for sponsoring my Philippine adventure 
and for helping me navigate these dark roads. We are on low fuel. We still have two hours and 15 minutes to go. We're not gonna make it. It's just a big old, all these hill climbs. We go up mountains, we go down mountains, up, down them. We're fully laden and we're just going through the fuel. There's no petrol stations, um, or not any ones that are open anyway. So we're hitting up the boys to come and try to save us, bring us fuel. We just won't make it. There's no chance. Otherwise we'll have to camp out in like one of these things, which I don't <laughs> experience. And then all the <laughs> all the fog, all the mist, and there's cows, there's mud, there's sand. I've had a few slip outs. One was a big one, front tire just went out from underneath me. Had Jenna on the back, saved it, thank goodness. But I'm going slow, I'm just cruising. But this is hectic. This is this is full on. We're in the clouds right now. It's beautiful. I want to know what the range is of your fuel right now. 43 kilometers. 43 kilometers. It's 67 to town. <laughs> I think we could reach there, but I don't know if there are gas stations still open. Even here in Bangkok, a lot of them are closed. There's got to be like some kind of gas station that's open. No, well. You guys know how to siphon? <laughs> we have a lot of gas. If we siphon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're at one of the we're at some kind of top with a traveler's mason sign. Yeah, yeah. If you said that you can send help, it would help if you could tell them to meet us on the route as an intercept, as in they start the route and, and we meet each other. I could, we, we could do that right now. Sounds like fun! Up oh, here we go. We're going to embark on a late night rescue mission to intercept Rob and Jenna. Hopefully help them get some gas and make it here. <laughs> this day has not run out of drama yet. Let's go. It is 12.30 a.m. Gonna save Jenna and Rob. <laughs> right safe, boys. Hey, easy on the gas, boys. Oh my god, that's your moon band, you know? You should get home by about 3.30 in the morning. I'm wrecked. <laughs> Jet is wrecked, everyone wrecked. Uh, but we're getting through it. And I mean, like, these conditions are just unforgiving, man. You don't want to slip up on any of this crap. Oh, it's a little sandy and muddy. I'm loving it. <laughs> it's an adventure. Oh my gosh. Knowing that the rescue squad were on their way to intercept us, our mission was to power on while paying close attention to fuel consumption. Yeah, the road kind of disappeared. It's over there. Being built. Third, we've got delicious clay. So hectic. The boys were still a few hours away, and we needed enough fuel reserve to get us all back to the Cobra Farm. Ah. While Jenna and I were trying to survive everything the mountain threw at us, the boys were on their own mission, to find a hose or gas. First they checked with the police outpost, no luck. Then they checked with the town police station. I literally saw him standing there. I don't think he was again. Still no luck. Meanwhile, I was having some microphone issues, and the road conditions, yeah, they were getting worse. Jenna's going ahead to have a little scout, because you can see that, it's just all mud and a bridge and a big body of water in the middle of it. Is it that slippery? Wow. Oh, wow. I'll, have, I'll come have a look. Crap. It's probably better off going in the bloody water. Yeah, no, it's too soft, man. I'll bog into that for sure. Yeah, like, look at that, man. There's no... Oh, God, yeah, there's no way in the world. <laughs> I reckon the water's going to have to be the way to go. Yeah. What? The water's the way. It's still counter, counter I know, but it's the way. Wow, okay. This is the thing. <laughs> Got some rocks. There's a convenience store. Oh wow, it's 24-7 convenience store. Ha ha ha!
not even a road. <laughs> it's like, where is it gone? <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> so we're stopping here to get a status update. We're about two hours from their last known location. Time check, 1.15. But in other news, the range is going up. Fuel is going into the tank. Oh, she is muddy. It is super muddy. Oh, this is muddy. Whoa! Wow! That was a deep sloppy boy. Look at the tires, man. These are just the metal is not even real off road tires. Look at the mud everywhere. <laughs> this is such a mission. <laughs> <laughs> it had been over one and a half hours since the boys left to rescue us and over six hours since we left Kalinga. It was at this point that I was getting extremely fatigued until Oh my god is that you guys? <laughs> Good work. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh my god. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Three liters of gas oh. in our backpack. Oh, serious? <laughs> How? We're able to find a, a place to buy. There's a convenience store. Oh, wow. It's 24 7 convenience store. Successfully got three bottles of gas, so three liters. We're carrying one liter of gas each, and ours are in the backpack. Now we can rescue them. <sighs> what a night! Team rescue! Oh, amazing! Egg is <laughs> Oh god! Oh, hey bro, how are you? Nice to meet you, buddy. Good to meet you. Yeah, you guys are Thank right. you for coming out. Hey, oh, appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> the Milky Way is up. Hey bro, how are you? <laughs> yeah, so me, man. Thanks for <laughs> thanks for coming. <laughs> thanks for rescuing us. Yeah. <laughs> Holy crap! I was. Wait, wait, turn off your light first. I want to show them. Guys, look up, look up. The Milky Way is pumping tonight. Oh, look at this. Yeah, that was brutal. With some cash and luggage of like, I don't know, 70 kilograms? This guy's a fucking legend! <laughs> <laughs> alone, and we were alone. The only people on the road. No group. No nothing, just this dude <laughs> and this loud mouth. That loud mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh that yeah. Oh, is that beer? The good stuff, huh? These are the good things. Don't forget about This is hilarious. Are we documenting this? We better. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yes. Bro, we are. 55 kilometers from Cobra Farm. Refueled and slightly re-energized, the boys escorted us back to the Cobra Farm, where we arrived just before the crack of dawn. That's what you do here, man. You just, just hammer it. Not only does it, you know, do you get to the places fast, but it does keep you cool because it is damn hot here. I'm wrecked. My wrist is very sore. Front tire came out. My leg went out again. Did my knee again. It's okay. I'll have to just do some R and R when I get home before I head to the Himalayas in just ten days' time. Yeah. Last night was crazy. What a what a test. Riding through the mountains yesterday and then seeing that we had two and a half hours to go and I only had two bars of fuel left. We would have made it back. Thankfully, Monzit, Ark and Aaron came to the rescue, our nights in shiny armor. And we just pinned it back here and it was the most incredible road from where they met us all the way back here for an hour and a half. 
beautiful sweeping twisting roads and we're all just on a nice line all on awesome bikes it was so good so thank you boys for coming to rescue us we wouldn't have made it so right now we're here at monzit's farm it's 12 p.m i just wake up uh we got here at 4 30 a.m it was meant to be a four and a half hour ride but it took seven and a half hours having Jenna on the back, fully laden. I wanted to bring Jenna along. Jenna helped me a lot during the preparation of this tour. She literally planned the route, so she had to come. She had to, she had to experience this as well. So today we're going to have a slow start and then we're gonna make our way up to the blazing mountain of the gods for sunset. Should be Took to the Nuva Era Mountains en route to the Blazing Mountain of the Gods. What a name, right? I had to see what this mountain was all about, and everything was going fine, and we were all scheduled to get there for sunset. However, the scrambler wasn't feeling so keen. Oh, Shiza, my bike's overheating. Yeah, that's what it'll be. We need water. We should have hosed it out at the farm. Bummer. Oh, hang on. I'm leaking. I'm leaking coolant. That's just the overflow. So it's it's obviously building up too much pressure. Oh, that's, that's been leaking on my tire. Oh, shit. Shiza. You want me to Lumix your spitting on it? I'm not gonna, I probably won't spit on it. I'll just trickle. <laughs> yeah, I know. Look at it, man. Oh, yeah, that's a lot in there. They got rid of a lot, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's still pretty clogged up, though. It needs a good blast. Mud from the night before had clogged the radiator up to something good. My new mission was to find a gas station in hopes to remove the tank and gain access to the radiator cap. In the meantime, the roads turned from jarring concrete to circuit smooth tarmac with beautiful twisties and stunning views to complement. Look at these hairpins, man. <laughs> getting frothy with those mega twisties, it was back to the task at hand. I need water. Water, yeah. Where can I get water? Just for, there, it's overheating. Uh, I need to clean the radiator and fill it up with, just there? Thank you. Ah. Uh. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you so much. Let's try to get it all in there, eh? 
Well, they couldn't get the tank off. All our tools are um, back at the back at the farm, and no one has tools here. Just need a ten mil spanner to get the tank off to be able to fill it up with water. But I did blast it out as much as I could. Uh, the radiator, try to clear all that mud out. We've got about an hour and a half trek into the mountain. Bit of rain, maybe. Um, it's already 20 past six, so the sun has already just set. So let's see how we go, eh? Hopefully we see something. It would be nice. Let's go. Right hand side. With darkness closing in, I pinned it. I was on a mission to reach the blazing mountain of the gods before dark. But due to our delays, it wasn't looking too good. They're way ahead of us, moving a lot faster. Is that them? We have found our friends! Mission aborted! <laughs> Unfortunately, we didn't make it in time for sunset. So we pulled over and regrouped. Jenna decided to get a camera and set up just do it over and over and over and over and give a quick photography lesson. Over and over and over. That's when we started to get creative. Yeah. Uh, hide the light. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> That's so cute! Oh, that's amazing! You don't want to sit there while I do it? Oh my god. Sit here? Like in front of right here? Me? Oh, okay, yeah. Let's see. yeah, do it, do it, do it! Alright! Oh, that looks oh! so good! Oh! Good job, yeah! team! Everybody. Perfect! Oh my god! I'm so happy about that. That's amazing. <laughs> that's, a, that's a photo by Aaron, kinda. You press this, you press. Uh -oh. Unsure who to credit for the photo, we had to get moving. There was a storm brewing in the distance and it was closing in fast. With the tropical rainstorm right above us, we took shelter in a nearby empanada eatery where I tried a local Philippine cuisine. We are rained in, so we're having a, a quick feed. <laughs> Balut! Balut! I tried Fertilized a like <laughs> duck egg. I tried a little bit. It doesn't look like egg. I did close my eyes, so but just there, just the idea, you know. It's all mental, Rob. <laughs> it's mental. What? Once the rain had passed, we decided that the way we came from would be too dangerous to ride. So we took to the coast, sightseeing along the way before arriving back to the farm at the early hours of the morning, once again. We had quite a long leg ahead of us, so my top priority was to top off all fluids and clean the radiator as thoroughly as possible. The boys are on once more. A solid trek. What have we got? Seven hours and 42 minutes back to Manila. Yes, the boys. Doosh. Doosh. You too, brother. Boom. Vamos. Thanks for letting us stay, bro. Mucho apreciado. Saturday night vibe, say? I was thankful that the rain gods had decided to take some time out. However, as the traffic started to build up, so did the heat. It was getting hot. Like, really hot. I got sweat dripping in my eyes. Man, I'm glad I put water in this thing. 
Naturally, the scrambler was overheating again, and so were we. Oh, this bike's on fire. Jesus Christ, that's hot. <sighs> it runs hotter than the street scrambler on a cold day, you know? You know it's hot when the top of your hands sweat my entire body. Layer of juicy, juicy, sweaty balls. All right, hopefully that holds out a bit. Yeah, temperature's dropped anyway. Hopefully get out of here soon and then make a pin for it. Just need the airflow, baby. So we did. At this point, we weren't even halfway and the day was coming to an end. So we had to really get moving. Coffee time. Thanks for the escort, brother. Absolutely demolished. Looking forward to getting some sleep for about <laughs> four hours before heading back out to DGR. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Just don't overheat luck. And then somehow I've got to sort out this luggage. <laughs> the luggage is still at the glass house, so I might have to extend my stay, change my flights, and sort that out. It's all part of the adventure, eh? So close guys, <laughs> far out. Well here we are ladies and gentlemen, holy crap hola, we made it. It was such a slug yesterday, but we did it. We had a bit of a downpour. I cleaned the bike a little bit, but still, it's definitely the dirtiest one here. DJ Manila, it is cooking. And so they have like a super early, early morning start here because it gets so hot. So we're meant to head off at 6.30 in the morning. Meetup was at 5.30. I got up at 4. I went to bed at 2.30. Just, I just wrecked it. So, so wrecked. This is cool. 3,000 riders. Holy moly. Look at that. Woo! Alright, we're about to we're about to kick it. <laughs> well, we did it. 1,650 kilometer loop through the stunning Philippine landscape, returning to Manila just in time for DGR. Back home in Australia, I have Filipino friends who have always spoken about how beautiful their country is, but I never imagined it would be anything like this. The landscape left me in a constant awe. The mountains, tropical beaches, rivers, all come together to create a truly majestical setting that will stay with me for a lifetime. Not to mention the riding. I've never experienced anything like it. By far, it has been the most enjoyable riding of my life. I hate to say it, but the roads at home would just seem boring in comparison. To everyone who I met along the way, Nong, Brando, Monzat, Ark and Aaron, just to name a few, thank you for allowing me the pleasure to ride alongside you and for teaching me the ways of your culture. And of course, Jenna. The route you planned for me isn't for the faint-hearted. 
but damn was it worth it. We went through a lot and every step of the way you were there with the most positive attitude. So thank you for taking care of me and being such a great companion. This trip is one for the books and I owe it all to you. And thank you Triumph Philippines for the Triumph 1200 Scrambler XC. It brought me back home in one piece and was a damn joy to ride. And thank you to our official sponsor, Quadalot. I definitely would not have been able to make this journey without you, so thank you for making this possible. And of course, thank you for joining me on my first ever yeah, international yeah. motorcycle adventure. This is my first time camping overseas. I've got some unfinished business with the Blazing Mountain of the Gods, so rest assured, I'll be back. Look at this man. <laughs> it's so good. But for now, what? The Himalayas are calling. <laughs>